good morning. Uh, Pastor Terry asked the staff to share our vision for our ministry area, so let me introduce myself. My name is Corrine. I get to be the family wellness coach here at Okotoks Alliance. I am, by nature, what you might call a people person, highly relational. My family would be able to tell you that since a very young age, I've kind of gathered people around me. I've heard people in their relationships liken to Lego blocks. Some are like this one, with just enough capacity for one or two significant connections. Some are more like these, with far more capacity. I am more like this. <laughs> I'm an extrovert, and I get energy from being with people. And I'm also rather social. I love to plan events that bring people together. People in relationships matter to me and always have. I was blessed to be born into a Christian family and raised in a God-fearing, church-attending home. Most of my growing up years, my dad was a pastor. The church was not just a place to meet spiritual needs, but most of my social activities stem from relationships I had there as well. The people we hung out at the lake with and did New Year's Eve with and got together with for meals with have, by and large, been people from my church family. Meeting and befriending others who might need to meet Jesus has taken intentional effort. So my personality and background, along with my education and training, have informed my vision for ministry and laid the groundwork for the role that I have here. Um, but before I talk about what that means to me, let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are such a wise and loving and good God. You, in your very nature, are also relational. You know we need not only you, we need each other. You have created us to be unique, fearfully and wonderfully made. We are your handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which you prepared in advance for us to do. Help us today, Holy Spirit, to hear from you, to find our identity and wellness in you, to be obedient to the prompting of your spirit for our lives, and what that looks like as we do life together as a body of believers at Okotoks Alliance. Amen. A few decades ago, last century, as a matter of fact, I got a degree in nursing. And when the debate would take place about whether is nursing is a science or an art, I always knew where I found myself on that question. I can learn the science. But I didn't love the part where we had to know things like what the balance of sodium and water should be in the distal convoluted tubules and the nephron of the kidney. What I loved was caring for people and making a difficult time a little easier. To talk with them about their fears and provide physical comfort as I was able. And then when I went back to school many years later to get a counseling degree, I found the sweetest spot of all. Getting to sit and hear people's stories, to walk the journey of life with them, pray together, helping people find healing and wellness. I'm passionate about that. And I believe it matters to me because it matters to God. When Jesus was asked what the most important commandment was, he responded, the most important commandment is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. My relational heart loves that his answer talks about our relationships. Loving him, loving others, loving ourselves. Jesus spoke about loving him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. What? we might call our emotional selves, or the heart, our spiritual selves, our soul, our mental or intellectual selves, our mind, and physical selves, our strength. And doing it with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength means we have to be well in those ways to do it well. <clears throat> in my role as family wellness coach, I get to meet with individuals and couples and families to work towards wellness. It's my honor and privilege to care for people, as I'm able, when they're hurting in these areas. But it's even better to just witness people operating in wholeness and wellness, to have balance and contentment and joy in their day-to-day -day lives, to live in a state of grace, experiencing and doing life as God intended. 
which can look different for each of us depending on how he's wired us, what he has planned for us, and what he has given us a passion and ability to do. In counseling, I often use the metaphor of a table to represent the four aspects of our nature that Jesus referred to. Like this little table standing on four legs, we operate best when we are strong and sturdy and well in our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual beings. But if one of those is suffering and weeks, is suffering or weak, perhaps been kicked out from under us, we wobble. We can stand on three legs for a while, if everything is balanced correctly and relying on the other areas, and no extra bumps come our way. Like if you're facing health challenges, even significant ones, but have good support and mentally and emotionally are okay, and spiritually you're relying on God and believe completely in his goodness and faithfulness, you will likely manage the difficulty reasonably well. But if stresses of life or concerns for managing your home or job or yard or finances begin to stress and weaken the mental leg you stand on, you're in a precarious position. And when that impacts your emotional health and you begin to feel anxiety or despair or hopelessness or fear, we tire very easily and get exhausted when we're standing on only one leg. Relying on God and knowing he is good and has everything under control still makes day-to-day -day coping difficult when we feel like physically, mentally, and emotionally we have nothing left. For some, or in some circumstances, it can even leave us wondering if God is there and if he even cares and our spiritual selves begin to suffer. When that last leg is knocked out from under us, we find ourselves flat on the floor, unable to get up on our own strength the broom tree moments of life I spoke about earlier this summer. It's in these times when we need someone or something outside ourselves to come and lift us up and carry us along until we can stand firmly once again. It may be your family and friends, your existing support network. When things are desperate, it may mean professional help is necessary, at least for a time. Medical help, counseling, coaching, healing or deliverance ministry, Certainly prayer support and connecting or reconnecting with God will be essential. And the church body, the family of God that meets at Okotoks Alliance, may be a beautiful part of that. My role as family wellness coach also means I get to work towards encouraging wellness for us as a family. <clears throat> a family of extended family of brothers and, and sisters as the body of Christ called to live and work and worship in harmony and wellness. I'm part of the family ministries team. My specific ministry areas focus on ministry to adults. And it, but in the coming weeks, you'll hear from Gay and Steph, who oversee ministry to youth and children, and how this fits their passion and visions for their ministry areas. But we work as a team. We support ministries and plan events intended to foster a sense of belonging and connection for those of all ages and between those of all ages within the OAC family. Some of what we do is intended to reach out to the community, but our ministry activity is largely centered on the Loving His Church part of the Vision 2025 mission in creating a place for people to connect and belong. Connection and belonging are essential for personal wellness. We're created to be relational beings, some with a few close relationships and others with many, but intended to do life with others, not isolated or alone or feeling abandoned. Being connected matters. And beyond feeling a sense of connection to others or to a place or organization, truly feeling like we belong makes an enormous difference. Knowing that we matter for who we are, not just what we do. That it makes things better because we are a part of them. We have a role to play and are hardwired by God to make important contributions by the way he made us. What we bring to the party is important. I'm passionate about helping people to thrive in these ways at OAC. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the church in Corinth, said, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. 
If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts. And God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. To be well as a body, we need to be a place where people can connect and find belonging. But it also means we each need to do the part God intends for us to do. We all matter. It's easy to look at roles like being part of a worship team or being an elder or working with the children and seeing how they might be like being the heart or the mind or the hands and feet of the body. Extremely important and recognizable. But the parts that operate behind the scenes or under the radar are also essential. Earlier I mentioned distal convoluted tubules and the nephron of the kidney. Most of us probably aren't aware we have them or know what they do. But they are super important in maintaining the acid-base balance in the body. We have an endocrine system, which is a complex network of glands and organs that uses hormones to control and coordinate our body's metabolism, energy level, reproduction, growth and development, and response to injury, stress, and mood. We have a nervous system that sends messages back and forth between the brain and the body so the body can control all the body's functions. We don't see them, but these things matter. When they're working well, we don't even really think about them or notice what they do. But when there's a problem, it can impair function or even be life-threatening. So too with the body of Christ. We can operate with deficiencies. Some members of the body can step up and fill in roles they're not particularly meant to do, meaning it's not what they're passionate about or created by God to thrive in. But they can keep things functioning, perhaps with a noticeable limp, a little less efficiently or vibrantly, compensating not like the original design the Creator intended. The passage in Corinthians we read earlier says our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where He wants it. If God put you here, He wants you here, and He wants you fulfilling the role He has for you. So, what does a healthy, vibrant body of Christ look like? Several passages of Scripture talk about this. We'll go through them quickly, but here are a few. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since, as members of one body, you were called to peace, and be thankful. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you're already doing. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And finally, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the gift 
or the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Today we're hosting a ministry fair as part of our kick fall kickoff weekend. It's been on the calendar since the beginning of the year and makes sense with school back in and ministry starting back up. I'm preaching this week because, Lord willing, I'm off to Israel next week. I needed to get my turn in. But it is no coincidence that my passion and vision and heart and invitation to find your place in the body lined up with a preaching calendar and an event that provides specific information and opportunities to become involved. God knew all along how this would play out. I did not tailor this sermon for the occasion. What I'm saying is basically an expanded version of what I shared when I was introduced as a new staff member in December of 2021. So, rather than feeling pressured or guilted into putting your name down somewhere on a list in the lobby, please take it as a beautiful, God-ordained invitation to find your place to connect and belong here at Okotoks Alliance Church, to sign up for a life group and experience the blessings we heard about earlier, to join a ministry team, to find a place in, to serve and do what you are passionate about, to get to know your church family outside of Sunday mornings, to play your part in the body that God created you to have. If you're watching online, the invitation is for you as well. You may not be here to see the displays or speak with the station hosts or write your name down, but you are invited to ask questions, to reach out, to attend, to serve, to find your place here. You matter. What you bring to the party matters. Your place in the family matters. I would encourage you to consider joining us as you are able. If you live nearby and jump in the vehicle at the end of the service, you could still make it in time for a chilly lunch, a North Wing open house, and the ministry fair. Earlier, we read several verses that spoke about what family life among the members of Christ's body should look like. I'd like to spend some time talking about what that looks like practically. Some of the gifts are easy to envision in action. Teaching, giving, leadership. And if this is you, God bless you. What would our Sunday services be like if we didn't have the skilled, dedicated musicians and teachers to lead us? How would we manage without our amazing tech teams who serve both our person and online communities and work wonders even when you throw things at them last minute? We need elders and ministry leaders and kids' zone teachers to help fulfill the vision set before us to seek God and work to carry out his plans for us as we discern them. And these ministries and our outreach and general operations could not happen without the financial gifts we receive. But instructions to encourage each other, to bear each other's burdens, to be kind to each other, or to serve, they're much more general and often harder to see. But just like the internal endocrine or nervous or circulatory systems of our body, they are absolutely essential. When these things are not happening or functioning well, the whole body suffers. Some of the most precious pictures I have of church life come from people doing things that go unnoticed or are not well known. People who came to pick weeds in our front um, shrub beds on a super hot day last summer. A life group who bought and wrapped gifts for someone who couldn't do it themselves last Christmas. Someone who makes specialty bread for a tenebrae service and family camp. Waking up with voices of people outside my bedroom window who showed up to do yard work for me when I was woefully behind and couldn't seem to get to it. It's doing life together. It's knowing people well enough to know where the needs are and stepping up to do what comes naturally or what you love to do or are gifted to do. It's love in action. If you know how to fix things, it may be showing up for a serve Saturday or helping someone who can't do it themselves. It might be bringing a truck and a friend to help someone move. If your kitchen is your happy place, it might mean making treats for an event or providing meals who are for those going through a difficult time. What you do matters. Might you sign up for kitchen ministries or meal ministries so that what God has given you a passion for can be used to bless the church family? We need you. You belong. 
If you have a strong back and willing heart and stay to stack chairs after a service or come in during the week to help make room for an event to happen, you may have no idea how significant and wonderful a gift that is. If you're someone who loves to plan and host events, but you must begin by moving chairs and then resetting tables and chairs before even getting to the event tasks, you can be exhausted before you begin. But if a few willing help hands help clear the way, your energy for the event is spared, and it's joyous. We'd love to get your name on the chair brigade so you might serve the church family when the need arises. Maybe you're the person who notices that the dolly we use for moving chairs is getting low on air in the tires and you have the knowledge and means to take care of it. You just made life so much easier for so many others who will use it. Unseen and often unnoticed acts that is God at work through his people, making a difference, doing their part. If you're a young adult who loves to show up in thrift stores and finds props for VBS or other functions, you are a gift. Put your name down for special events and help make them happen by doing something you like. If you love to experiment in the kitchen and have perfected recipes for gluten-free, dairy-free, nut-free foods so that everyone who might be at an event can enjoy something wonderful, you are a blessing. If you're musically inclined or an artist or dancer or have a knack for interior design, you could make our times of worship more beautiful and special if you were to reach out to Pastor Tim or indicate your interest on the sign-up sheet in the lobby. He'd be pleased to show you how you might be able to use your gifts for God's glory at OAC. If you love computers or anything techie, those of us who are woefully challenged in these areas cannot express how much easier and better you make things for us when you step up and do what comes naturally. Right, Gay? <laughs> People who can create and maintain a beautiful website and who get things out on social media are invaluable. <laughs> because of you, members of the community around us showed up with their children for our Easter egg hunt and Christmas path who would not have otherwise known what was happening. You played an important role in the success of the event since one of the key goals was community outreach. You matter. If you have that gift for communication, electronically, through social media, or in getting information to community event boards or papers, we need you. If you're a people person and love meeting and talking with people, we need you. Would you join our welcome teams and take an occasional turn in ushering or greeting or becoming an online host? If you are crafty or enjoy making things with your hands, if you're an idea person or love looking after details or planning events, we need you. If you love to organize or clean or sew or garden or are mechanically inclined, we need you. You belong and you matter. When we undertook our building project a few years ago and more recently needed to rebuild after the fire, the abilities of those who can create a vision and can come up with a plan and have skills in project management and understand building codes and construction practices, they were invaluable. We need you. You matter. If you have a passion for prayer, whether or not you feel comfortable praying publicly, but you recognize the need and vital importance, would you sign up for the prayer chain or join us for intercessory prayer meetings? If your heart is for the nations or the needy in our community, we need you. If mission trips excite you or volunteering in the community is your passion, would you connect with our global support team? If large group gatherings are not your thing, or your schedule is uncertain and signing up for things seems like an unwise commitment right now, but you'd love to be involved somehow, please come talk to one of us on the staff and we'd love to help you find a way to plug in. You matter to us. We want you to know you belong and what you have to offer is important. If you had an upbringing similar to mine in which church activities and relationships have always had a central role, but you are new here and haven't quite found your place to fit, We'd love to hear from you. You belong and we are so grateful you are here. If church is new to you, and what I'm saying seems foreign or just plain weird, but you aren't scared off and want to know more, please fill out a connection card or contact the church office and we'd love to get together to answer your questions or speak further about this. And I'm not only talking about the adults among us. When I look to the back and see our teens working in the tech booth, it brings joy to my heart. We've seen our children and youth involved in drama and dance and in playing music, and it's a blessing for all of us. 
We have young people who love to play with babies and like working with children who have become kids own volunteers and we could not have done BBS this year without them. Just this morning someone asked me is there an age limit to sign up on the sheets? No, because someone wants to help decorate. What a beautiful thing. At our recent family camp we saw some pictures. We knew what it was doing what we hoped it was by watching the kids. When a seven-year-old high-fives and cheers for a senior who's hopping to a bucket with a water-soaked sponge, it's fantastic. <laughs> someone he didn't know an hour earlier. Another elementary age boy asked someone else's mom to play ping pong, previously unknown. They were connecting and just naturally interacting with these church family members like they were favorite grandpas and aunts. A couple young girls came of their own accord and asked what they could do to sign up for chores. They are part of the family, and they matter. Our kids can seem to naturally connect and find ways to belong without some of the hesitancy adults can have. Don't get me wrong, the adults were great too, but the kids were amazing. Watching what happens when we act like family fills my heart. It brings me incredible joy. It's us as an OAC family being well. Caring for each other means doing life together not just inside the walls of the church. It carries over into things like those I've already mentioned, like making meals or helping around the house for those who are in difficulty or overwhelmed. It may be driving, picking someone up for church or taking them to appointments or the airport, watching someone's children or taking care of their pets when they're away, throwing a bridal or baby shower, helping with a funeral, sitting by a hospital bed, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. It can make all the difference. When I was speaking earlier about personal wellness and talked about our difficulties being like having a leg kicked out from under us, I mentioned how it can make us unstable and prone to falling. What if the church family were to come around those who were struggling and help hold them up? If your physical health is in jeopardy but you're well supported, people are caring for you and you know you're not alone, the lakes of mental and emotional and spiritual health are much more likely to stay strong. If you're experiencing mental and emotional stressors and feel weak and hopeless, but others come around with meals and practical help, if you know you are carried by prayer and encouragement, understanding and love, it may well be enough to keep you from falling flat. And when you find yourself with nothing left and you need others to come and lift you up and lift you before the Father, how beautiful it is when your church family rallies around you in this way. Our life groups are one of the best, most effective primary ways that this level of caring and family life happens. Getting to know others beyond Sunday morning and meeting regularly builds connections and a source of support that can be life-changing. Would you be courageous enough to sign up for a group or host a group or lead a group even if you really don't know anyone very well around here? If you've been in groups in the past and have not had a good experience, might you be willing to try again? If you are in a group, would you be willing to go deeper in your sharing? And if leading a group that opens up and goes deeper means you find yourself in a place where you feel overwhelmed and are not sure where to go or what to do next, helping you navigate that is also part of my job description. I would be pleased to coach you or support you in that. I can't support or counsel or encourage or carry everyone's burdens myself, but as people become more comfortable and equipped to care for others, we share the burdens and the triumphs together. We are a family. What if coming to church each Sunday felt like the best kind of family reunion? If we knew each other's names, if someone asks how you are and actually wants to know, if people follow up with what's been going on in your life, People who laugh and visit and pray with each other, encouraging each other, offering forgiveness, supporting each other, showing kindness, walking together through the seasons of life, coming together in love and unity, even if we disagree or annoy each other, or even argue sometimes, accepting and loving each other in spite of our flaws and failures. Just mentioning it and recalling the times I've seen it working like this almost overwhelms me. It touches the deepest relational parts of me that long for people to be well. I'm an optimist. I really do believe that this is possible. I know it is. I've seen it happen. 
And if you look for it, and the more we tell the stories of God's faithfulness displayed through his children, the more we will all see it. It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't even always happen well. I know that too. And if you've been with us for some time and feel like it has never happened for you here or in other church settings, I have a couple thoughts on that. First, might people have tried to reach out or to bless you and you missed it? Perhaps it wasn't what you were expecting or you didn't know how to take it, so it didn't seem to meet the need. But whether or not the person behind the act knows your name, there are those among us who have put in great effort to make you feel special, to let you know you matter. When special touches are added to a function to make it memorable, it's with you in mind. When someone makes little gifts or donates a door prize or creates verse advents or gives to the benevolent fund to bless others, it's because you matter. I happen to know these things are prayed over, that they would be a blessing to those who receive them, and your church family is reaching out in love, even if they have not met you before. You matter. Secondly, are you connected? Have you been part of a small group or ministry or attended functions that would give you an opportunity to share what's on your heart or what your needs are? Have you reached out? My next question may well touch a nerve or seem impertinent, but I'll ask it anyway. Might it be that your expectations of others are a desire to fill a space or heal a hurt that only Jesus can? If so, we will always disappoint you. And if you suspect this might be the case and are willing to talk about it, I'd be honored to meet with you. But if you're here or listening, and you have reached out in a time of need, you let people know, you were honest, your expectations were not unreasonable and maybe only what you had seen done for others, but you were still disappointed, I wanna say I'm sorry. We don't always get it right. Would you give us another chance? Would you forgive our failures? Would you try again? Why does this matter? That we forgive and encourage and support and do life together. Is it just so we can become a little holy huddle? Absolutely not. It isn't about trying to keep people busier by adding more to your plate. It isn't about setting ourselves apart from the world and trying to replace your existing family and friend networks. It's because of what Jesus said in John 13, verses 34 and 35. So now, I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. It's so that the world will know. If someone new walks through the doors of the church, they should feel something different here. They should witness love in action. How we interact and love each other, who we are as a family, gives witness that we are his disciples. We are called to be salt and light to the community, making being a follower of Jesus attractive, being the kind of family that makes others want to belong, bringing joy to the Father's heart.